Yeah, good morning and welcome uh, to in Pitel lecture series on classics in total synthesis part 1. And today uh, we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of taxol. In the last lecture we talked about total synthesis of taxol by KC Nicholas group and today we will talk about total synthesis of taxol by Halton. In fact, Halton uh, claims that he was the first one to report the total synthesis and let us see how he and his group achieved the total synthesis of taxol. And it was reported in 1994 and the key reaction according to Halton is the fragmentation of an epoxy alcohol derived from another natural product to get the key 531 skeleton. The key 531 skeleton, he got it through a fragmentation of an epoxy which I will discuss in the next slide. Okay. And of course, there are other key reaction, one more key reaction is the Chan rearrangement which also I will discuss briefly and then a Dieckmann cyclization which you all know what is Dieckmann cyclization. Okay. The epoxy alcohol fragmentation uh, which was really a very, very clever uh, reaction to be utilized by Halton in the total synthesis of taxol. So, he started with an epoxide which is commercially available called pachino or pacholine epoxide. This, this idea is when you treat this epoxide with BF3 ethylate. So, BF3 ethylate no, it can coordinate this oxygen coordinate with Lewis acid. Then that epoxide will break. Then this bond will migrate. This bond will migrate which is anti to that, anti to the leaving group that epoxide. Now you will get a positive charge here, you will get a positive charge here, then a loss of proton will give you this compound. Okay. So this is a very, very important fragmentation reaction because this total synthesis involved two epoxy alcohol fragmentation, one is this, subsequently what he does using this hydroxyl group, he epoxidizes the double bond from the same side. Okay. So now when he makes the epoxide, automatically the epoxide, this epoxy alcohol undergoes fragmentation to give this bi bicyclo 531 system. So this is the A and B ring of taxol. This is the A and B ring of taxol. I will leave it for a few seconds so that you will be able to understand after this hydroxyl group breaks, this bond is broken. Okay. That is how it becomes A numbered ring, a 5 and 5, 5 and 5 becomes A numbered ring. Okay. That leads to the B ring of taxol. Okay. Now let us see the retrosynthesis, how overall for the total synthesis of taxol using this particular rearrangement as the key reaction, how Holton has cleverly made a retrosynthesis. Okay. And as I said he also used another rearrangement called Chan rearrangement to obtain 2 keto, 2 hydroxy, 3 keto ester, to obtain three, 2 hydroxy, 3 keto esters from alpha acyl oxyacetates. See what happens when you have alpha acyl oxyacetates, okay, alpha acyl oxyacetates, this on treatment with base, okay, it can generate an anion and immediately it will attack the carbonyl group. So it forms an epoxide. Now the O minus will come, the O minus when it comes, the 3 membered epoxide will open. Okay. So that will give you alpha hydroxy keto esters. Okay. So this is another key reaction which is used cleverly in the synthesis of taxon. So from retrosynthetic point of view, the first and easiest way to disconnect is to remove the ester. Okay. So if you have the hydroxyl group, always one can attach the side chain ester. Okay. That is a normal and the easiest retrosynthetic disconnection. The next disconnection which he has done was 
if you have a ketone here, if you have a ketone here, then this four membered ring can be easily attached. Okay. So, the first step should be to make this six membered ring. Once you have the six membered ring, the oxytent ring can be easily attached. Now, how this six membered ring can be used? So, this is where uh, we used a Dieckmann condensation. So, Dieckmann condensation, if you look at this double bond, if the double bond is, for example, cleaved and then converted into ester, hmm, cleaved and converted into ester, then one can generate anion here. Hmm, one can generate anion here and attack intramolecularly and if you open this, what you will get is this compound. The double bond should be converted into ester followed by treatment with base, it will intramolecularly undergo Dieckmann cyclization to give cyclohexanone. So that was his plan and this compound can be obtained by aldol reaction. Okay, if you have a ketone, then you can generate anion that enolate can add to the whole aldehyde. Okay. Now, if you look at this, this reminds you of the rearranged product that is epoxy alcohol fragmented product. So, that means this could be obtained from this epoxy, this substituted epoxy. Okay. Now, if you look at this, this can be obtained from the rearranged product. Again, another rearrangement. Okay. So, now this epoxy opens, this bond migrates and this hydrogen is eliminated, you get a double bond and that double bond is epoxidized. Okay. So, this epoxy can be obtained from another epoxy. Okay. Again what will happen when you treat with strong base, this will open up and you will get an allylic alcohol then that allylic alcohol the double bond can be epoxidized. Okay. So, this was a simple retrosynthesis which he thought based on the epoxy alcohol fragmentation. So, he started with the commercially available natural product. It was a natural product available in large quantity called petroleum oxide and this petroleum oxide on treatment with butyl lithium. As I said, when you have an oxygen particularly epoxide and then treat with LDA or strong base, you know, then it can open the epoxide to give the corresponding allylic alcohol. Okay. The epoxides can be opened with LDA to give corresponding allylic alcohol. Okay. This has been successfully used in many synthesis uh, that epoxides are converted into allylic alcohol. Sometimes desymmetrization also has been done to give corresponding chiral allylic alcohols. So, once you have this, then when you epoxidize, the alpha hydroxyl group will direct the epoxide from the same side. Okay. So, you get alpha epoxide. So, first you open the epoxide, now the epoxide will open at the same time rearrangement also will take place. So, if you treat with PF3 ethylate, with along with uh, trifluoromethane sulfonic acid, as I said, first it will coordinate with Lewis acid, then this bond will migrate and followed by loss of proton, you will get the corresponding alkene at the same time the epoxide is open. Okay. Is it easy to visualize? Okay. So, once you have this alcohol, now you have a secondary alcohol and tertiary alcohol. So, the secondary alcohol can be easily protected. So, this was protected as TS ether by treating with TS chloride and pyridine. And the next step as we have seen in the retrosynthesis is to epoxidize this double bond. Okay. And since you have a hydroxyl group which is in alpha position, automatically that will direct the epoxidation. So, you will get the corresponding alpha epoxide. But this reaction is so clean, it does not stop there. Okay. As expected, this undergoes the rearrangement okay, and opens the epoxide to get the bicyclo 531 system. Okay. 
the same part that is as soon as the epoxide is formed it undergoes opening of the epoxide to give bicyclo 531 system. So, that is the AB ring. Now, if you look at this carefully the A ring, A ring has all the functional group except at the bridge head position you should have OH. Now, what you have is H and B ring you need another oxygen functional group and here also you need another oxygen functional group. Okay, let us see how he moves forward and then completes the total synthesis. So, instead of LDA, okay, he took uh, MDA that is magnesium diisopropylamide, magnesium diisopropylamide that, that is to generate enolate here okay, and then quench with this pentenol. Okay. So, that will give you the precursor that will give you the precursor which is required for making the C ring. So, C ring as you know it is a cyclohexane ring and later you plan for intramolecular Dieckmann cyclization to get the 6 membered ring. So, now the double bond is introduced. Next step is to protect the hydroxyl group. First it was treated the hydroxyl group was treated with pos gene. Okay. So, pos gene what will happen that R group will become R O C O C L. Okay. Then when you treat with ethanol what will, what will happen? It will become R O C O then O E T. Okay. So, that is what you get it is called off ester. Okay. First you get off ester then the chloride is replaced by ethanol to get O C O 2 E T. Once you protected the hydroxyl group, now as I said you need to have a hydroxyl group here and also you need to have hydroxyl group. So, if you treat with the LDA, the enolate will be generated here, then quench with this oxazoridine. Okay, this is a chiral oxazoridine derived from camphor sulfonic acid. Okay, this is called Davis oxazoridine. Okay, it is used to introduce a hydroxyl group stereo selectively and introduce chirality. So, selectively one can introduce a hydroxyl group which is required at this carbon. Now, if you look at this conformation, again I leave this structure for a minute, you will see that this has a boat chair conformation that 8 membered ring has a boat chair conformation. Okay. I leave it like this because it takes some time to understand how this was drawn and when you look at this compound carefully now any attack on this carbonyl group, any attack on the carbonyl group should take place from the front side that means that should give alpha hydroxyl group. Okay. So, this boat chair conformation was cleverly used for further steps. So, now you treat with the red all as I said the hydride will come from the front side. So, you will get alpha alcohol. You have 3 secondary alcohol 1, 2, 3 and when you treat with pos gene. So, when you treat with pos gene it can form cyclic carbonate. So, it can form with 1, 2 diol or it can form between 2 and 3. Okay. There are 2 possibilities, but what he got was 6 membered cyclic carbonates. Okay. It, it formed a 6 membered cyclic carbonate. Then you can easily oxidize the other secondary alcohol under Swan condition. Okay. Once you have the ketone, now you treat with tetramethyl piperidine, okay. tetramethyl piperidine and butyl lithium. There are 2 possibilities. One, it can generate anion here or it can generate anion here. Okay. So, it generates anion here, then it undergoes Chan rearrangement, then it undergoes Chan rearrangement, which I already explained what is Chan rearrangement. So, after the Chan rearrangement, what you have got is a hydroxyl group. Okay. Hydroxy ester is the one which you get, isn't it? Hydroxy keto ester is the one which you get, and that is what you got here. So, now the hydroxyl group is it required? No, you do not require. So, how do you remove the hydroxyl group? You can easily remove the hydroxyl group with samarium iodide. 
okay somewhere you made one electron donor so that way you can easily remove uh, halo or hydroxy group which is next to carbonyl group and then one why you can ask why it is enol the once the hydroxy group is removed then it will be in keto enol form which seems to be more stable okay now you treat with silica gel so that no you can get back your ketone and when you do that this particular carbon the hydrogen can be beta or alpha but you get a mixture you get beta which is the unwanted one for taxol you need alpha hydrogen but what you get is beta as the major product nevertheless with that again he treated that beta keto ester with lithium tetramethyl piperidine and followed by treatment with uh, davis oxazoridine so the idea is to introduce a hydroxyl group so it was easy you can introduce hydroxyl group still what happened during the process the 3 beta 3 beta is becoming more okay so no problem so one can easily solve that so now if you reduce the ketone okay if you reduce the ketone as i mentioned it is in both chair conformation so that means when you add any reagent to this ketone it will come from the front side okay that means you will get alpha alcohol so the red all you get alpha alcohol then what you do you do a base treatment basic workup so that basic workup actually is used for epimerization so this way now they could get the trans stereo centers okay now what you have to do somehow you have to connect this to get a six membered ring so before that you need to protect this diol so that is easily done by treating with phosgene to get the cyclic carbonate then followed by ozone analysis ozone analysis of the double bond you get the aldehyde as i said that double bond should be converted into ester so that was done in two steps first oxidize the aldehyde to carboxylic acid then treat with diazomethane you get the corresponding ester then the intramolecular dikman cyclization takes place by treating with the lda lda generates anion that attacks this lactone and opens up and that is what you get okay so what you have to do you have to protect this hydroxyl group and the whole thing should be converted into oxytane ring so what he did next he protected the hydroxyl group as with this is not ethyl vinyl ether but a vinyl ether substituted vinyl ether so when you do that you can protect that alcohol as omop okay methoxy propyl ether then the b this is a beta keto ester this is a beta keto ester you can you can write like this isn't it it's a beta keto ester as you know beta keto esters can be easily cleaved under various condition the ester group can be easily removed and one of them is potassium thiophenylate the potassium thiophenylate is known to remove the ester so you get a keto okay now if you carefully look at this particular intermediate what you need is a functional group here and then what you need is an oxytane ring okay then you treat with the pbts because um, the map group should be converted into some other protecting group to make it a better protecting group so that was done with bomb chloride benzyl oxymethyl methyl chloride and that was protected as bomb then you convert this ketone into oxytane for that first treat with the lda so when you treat with the lda you can generate anion to form the enolate and quench with tms chloride you get corresponding enol tms ether okay once you generate enol tms ether so you can functionalize here so treat with the mcpba so it opens up and then it form o tms okay you have the ketone and if you do wittig reaction you can get double bond and wittig reaction but uh, was not that facile so he treated with methyl magnesium bromide to get corresponding tertiary alcohol 
So once you have the tertiary alcohol, then he needs a double bond. The double bond was easily achieved by dehydration using Burgess reagent. So the Burgess reagent is nothing but this reagent. So this is used for making or dehydrating an alcohol to get corresponding double bond. And usually it goes to less substituted double bond. Once you have the double bond, what is left? You have to do the oxytane formation. And before that, you remove the TMS group with HF pyridine to get the allylic alcohol. Then osmium tetroxide will give you the triol by dihydroxylation. Dihydroxylation on the double bond will give you triol. Okay. So now almost everything is set for the oxytane formation and selectively protect the primary alcohol. In situ you protect the primary alcohol as TMS ether, then make the secondary alcohol as a good leaving group. So you make it as tosyl group, then treat with DBU. So DBU will give corresponding oxytate. So now what needs to be done? You have to protect this hydroxyl group and open this cyclic carbonate and introduce another oxygen functionality here. So acetic anhydride pyridine, first it will acetylate this hydroxyl group, so that is taken care. Then HF pyridine, so you have bulky TBS and then TS group, so TS group can be selectively cleaved in the presence of TBS. So once you have the OH, then you also can open this, the cyclic carbonate to get the corresponding benzoate and bridgehead hydroxyl group. Okay. Now to introduce a functional group here, this hydroxyl group should be ox oxidized. So that was done easily with TBAP in the presence of a co-oxidant NMO. So you get the ketone. Once you have the ketone, this is a standard method where a hydroxyl group can be introduced next to the ketone here and followed by isomerization with potassium tertiary butoxide, these two gets exchanged. So ketone comes here and hydroxyl group goes there. Okay, that is what you need in taxa, isn't it? That is what you need in taxa, keto, hydroxy ketone. What is left? Now in taxol this is OAC, isn't it? That taxol this is OAC. So you have to treat with DMAP, pyridine acetic anhydride to get the acetoxy group. Later if you look at carefully, this structure has all the functional groups present in taxol except the bomb group should be hydrogen and also the TBS group should be cleaved and then attached with the side chain. The TBS group should be cleaved and attached with the side chain. So fluoride source removes the TBS group. Then you attach the side chain with Ojima's lactam. Okay. Now what needs to be done, if you look at this particular product, you have to remove the bomb group, you have to remove the TS group. Okay. The TS group can be easily removed with HF pyridine. Okay. It's a sil silyl protecting group, so HF is known to remove the silyl protecting group, you get the hydroxyl group. And now hydrogenation, okay, benzyl oxy, methyl chloride, hydrogenation can be easily used to cleave the benzyl oxy, methyl group, benzyl group, okay, all that can be done and once you remove that, you get directly the taxol. Okay. So the overall, if you look at the total sense of taxol reported by Halton, it involved two epoxide rearrangements. Okay. We started with patchouline epoxide and then under several acidic condition, the epoxides were rearranged to give the bicyclic intermediate, bicyclic 531 system. Okay. So once you have the bicyclic 531 system, then it was a matter of functional group transformation to achieve the total synthesis of taxon. Okay. Overall, if you look at this uh, synthesis, the key features are one, he started with a chiral naturally occurring compound called pachino or pachaline oxide, 
one. Second, he used two epoxy alcohol fragmentation, two epoxy alcohol fragmentation to get the key bicyclo 531 system. Okay. Then like others, of course, since he was the first one to report, he used the Ojimas protocol to introduce the side chain attached to CA ring. Okay. Overall, uh, he took about 46 linear steps. Nevertheless, as you know, this was the first total synthesis. So, a first total synthesis of a complex natural product having so many functional groups and it was very well thought about and uh, now starting from a natural product to natural product. One can easily call this as a nature to natural product. You start with a natural product and you end with a natural product which is really of uh, very significance. Okay. As you know, Taxol has been used as uh, anti-cancer agent for the treatment of ovarian and breast cancer. The methodology developed by Robert Halton is a very interesting and clever methodology though this may not be the method to make Taxol in good quantities, but it gave excellent scientific training for many co-workers worked on this project. Okay, so thank you.